Hey guys, welcome to our 2.5 video on density. We'll start off with the definition. So density is how much mass something has in a certain volume. So here are two objects, okay? We can tell that the objects are relatively the same size, right? We can make that guess, um, but their mass is different, okay? So that also means their density is gonna be different. How can one object have more matter if they're the same size? Obviously the blue block has twice the amount of matter or mass that the first block has. So how is that possible if they're the same size? Well, the blue block must have a higher density because it must have more matter packed into the same amount of volume. Now let's look at the two blocks um, on the molecular level. The first block up above, you can see all of the little atoms or molecules are packed very tightly together. And in the same amount of space, the blue block has the atoms spaced out. So we can see that the top block has more matter or mass, but it's contained in the same amount of volume as the blue block. Therefore, the yellow matter is more dense because dense is a measurement of mass per volume. Now let's look at two blocks. So the technically, if it's the same type of matter, so if it's, this is the same block that I just cut in half, it also has the same density because matter is equally crowded. The size of the piece doesn't make a difference. It's how crowded the particles are. We can see in both pictures that the atoms are crowded just as tightly in both pictures, so they have the same density. We can use density to predict if objects will float or sink. So you can predict that this yellow object is gonna sink because it's denser than the water. And so it, it will sink down to the bottom. Objects that are less dense than water will just sit on the top of the water or kind of float up and down um, in the water. Water is the typical object that we use to compare whether objects will sink or float. Um, these two pictures just say the duck is less dense than the water, so it floats, and then here it says the anchor is more dense than water, so it sinks. So what happens if we can't look at the molecules, which we normally can't, if I don't give you a diagram? If I'm just looking at a duck or looking at an anchor, how can I mathematically figure out whether it will be denser than water? So <clears throat> how do we figure that out? Well, remember density is a measurement of mass and volume, and so we want to measure mass and volume separately and then plug them into a formula to find density. So this is the formula for density. You want to write this down on your table. We take the mass of an object and we divide it by its volume to get density. Um, first we measure the mass, usually, usually using a scale, um, and then mass is going to be in grams. Then we'll measure the, uh, the volume, which is in milliliters, or it can be centimeters cubed. Remember, when do we use centimeters cubed? That's if we do length times width times height of an object, okay? Milliliters is if we're looking in a graduated cylinder. Then we'll take those two values, the, the mass and the volume, and we'll divide them to get our density. So density is the measurement of mass per volume, and that's super, super important. Because if I have an object that weighs five grams, and it takes up five milliliters, well, the density is obviously one gram per milliliter, right? Well, what happens if I double, double the mass and double the volume you would think, probably normally, you would normally think that density would be greater. Well, it's not. 10 divided by 10 is still one gram per milliliter. So density is not how much mass and how much volume. It's how much mass per unit of volume. That's super important. Okay, let's do some problems. The first problem says if 52 grams of matter has a volume of 65 centimeters cubed, what's the density of water? Will it float? Or, or what's the density of the matter? I'm sorry. Will it float or sink? Whenever you're doing a problem, um, I always, always, always require you to label your givens. So every number we need to underline and we need to label what it is. So this is mass, because and I know it's mass because it uses the term grams, the unit grams. And then 65 centimeters cubed is my volume. It obviously mentions it right here, but it also, uh, the unit centimeters cubed uh, tells me that the 65 is my volume. Then you write out your formula. So if you want to write out the steps on your paper, you can. The first is label your givens. The second is write out your formula. Then I want you to rearrange our formula to solve for what we're looking for. We're looking for density, so we can leave it as D equals M over V. All I have to do now is plug in my M, 52 grams. Make sure you use your units, and 65 centimeters cubed. And then now all I need to do is plug this into my calculator, and I can get my answer. And my answer is 0 0.8 grams per centimeters cubed. Okay, next problem 
Uh, it says a metal washer has a density of 27 grams per centimeter cubed. So I'm going to stop here. And remember, the first thing we do is we always label our givens. I'm labeling this D because these are the units for density. Um, this metal washer also has a volume of 3 centimeters cubed. So I'm going to label this V. And now I'm solving for mass. So it's also good to write down what you're solving for in your problem. So we write out a formula again. It's D equals M over V. Now this one's a little bit trickier because when I plug in my numbers, density goes here, and then mass we don't know, so I have to just write it as M. And volume is 3 centimeters cubed. Okay, so if I'm looking at this problem and I'm trying to solve for M, think of this as like an algebra problem. It, the algebra problem would kind of look like this. We're trying to solve for X. Okay, X is our M. So if we're trying to solve for X, uh, what do we need to do to the 3 to get X by itself? Remember, anytime you're solving for a variable like X, X needs to be on the side of the equation all by itself, which means anything next to it needs to be removed. So we need to remove this 3. So always ask yourself, if you need to move something, what's being done to it currently? Well, currently, the 3 is being divided. Do you see that? It's, it's underneath our um, numerator, so it's being divided. So to move it the, to the other side, I have to do the opposite. I have to multiply. Now, why would multiplying by 3 be helpful? Well, if I'm dividing by 3 and then I'm multiplying by 3, guess what gets to happen to my 3? It gets canceled out, right? But whatever you did to one side of your equation, you also have to do to the other. So I multiplied by 3 on this side, and I multiplied by 3 on this side. And I got to cancel out the 3 on the right side of the equation. And so what looks like my equation now is 3 times 27 equals x or m, right? m is my x. So now all I have to do is 3 times 27 to get my mass. And when I do that, my mass is 81. And I have to always include units. So remember, our units for mass are grams. So 81 grams is my answer. Now we have one last problem. And this problem we're going to be solving for volume. We're going to look for volume. So let's see what we have in this problem. 32 grams is mass. 4 grams per centimeters cubed is density. So let's write out our formula. D equals M over V. We're going to plug in all our numbers. Here's the density value. Okay. We have our M value. It's 32 grams, but we don't have our V value. So let's kind of rearrange this to look like an algebra problem, 4 equals 32 over x. Well, this time x is on the bottom, right? And if x is on the bottom, it makes it really difficult to solve. So we're going to cross multiply and divide to solve for x. So if I just put a 1 on the bottom of this um, fraction, 4 over 1 is the same as 4, so I haven't changed the value at all, um, then see what I can do? I can cross multiply and divide. So now my formula is 4x equals 32. And now to solve for x, what do I need to do to 4 to get x by itself? Well, now, currently, 4 is being multiplied, so I want to do the opposite of that. So I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides so that I can cancel out of my 4. So now x equals 32 divided by 4, and then that's going to be my answer. So x well, x is volume, right? So volume is 8. And what's our units? Well, it looks like the density formula is using centimeters cubed, so we want to use centimeters cubed as our answer. So those are three sample density problems. Um, now I want to show you guys how we graph density. Density is called an intrinsic factor or an intensive property, meaning it stays the same regardless of the object's change in size. Um, if the object increases in mass, the object will also increase in its volume, resulting in the same density. So let's practice graphing density. A density graph has um, mass and volume, and so we're going to show mass as our x, and we're going to show volume as our y, okay? And uh, to make this really easy, let's just do... So that's our graph, volume over mass. Um, volume is always going to be our y, and mass is always going to be our x. And we want to graph the density line for a substance that has a density of 2.4. So how do we find volume and mass if we only have density? Well, we want to find volume and mass at different points. For example, we want to find, uh, like, we, we would want to find the um, volume when our mass was 2, and we'd want to find the volume when our mass was 5, and the volume when our mass was 8, so that we can graph a line. So what I first make is I make a little chart, okay, 
And then um, we're going to have mass here and volume here. And so let's just choose some random mass points. When the mass is 1, what's the volume? When the mass is 5, what's the volume? When the mass is 8, what's the volume? So I just picked random numbers so that I could get dots right here, here, and here on my graph. So I can end up making a line. So what I need, I need to do now is find the volume, sorry, these are supposed to be question marks, for each of those masses. So I really have three problems. The first problem, density is 2.4, okay? And my mass for my first problem is 1. So let's write our formula. Remember, it's D equals M over V. So D is 2.4, M is 1, what is V? Remember, if, if V or X is on the bottom of the numerator, what I want to do is just cross multiply and divide. So I'm going to turn this over 1, and then we'll do 2.4V equals 1 times 1, which is just 1, right? So to get V by itself, I want to divide both sides by 2.4. So V equals 1 over 2.4. So 1 divided by 2.4 is, looks like our volume is 0.42. And I always round to two numbers after the decimal. So our volume is uh, 0.42 milliliters. So if this is our, oh, I think I made my numbers wrong on this list. So when our mass is 1, then what is our volume? Our volume is 0.4. So this is our first dot. Let me make it with a different color so you can actually see it. That's our first dot. Okay, when mass is 1, volume is like half of 1, all right? So now let's go ahead and do our second problem. Our second problem, we are going to use the mass of 5 um, to find the volume. We're going to do the same problem. Um, we have mass is 5, so D equals M over V. Uh, mass is 5, we're looking for volume, density is still 2.4, um, I get 5 divided by 2.4, and my volume is 2. So when mass is 5, volume is basically 2, and so here's my second point. Ooh, let me go back. Here's my second point. So I have two points on my line. If I did the third point, which we're running out of time, so I'm not going to do it, but if you, if you had mass is 8 and density is 2.4 and you found your volume, uh, you would end up with something like this. So somewhere close to maybe four, a little under four. But we would see a straight line when we, when we drew the graph. The straight line means density doesn't change. So it, the reason why we know it doesn't change is because remember when our mass was one, our volume was 0 0.4, I think it was 4.2. When our mass was five, our, our, um, our volume was, what was it, two? If I take these numbers and divide them, if I divide 5 by 2 and 1 by 0 0.4, I end up with the same number, 2.4. That's my density. And so density will never, ever change. It always, always stays constant. Um, it's really easy to use graphs to figure out if something's going to float or sink in water. And so this next picture shows you two density lines. The, this first line right here is the line of copper. Um, and then this one's the line of aluminum. And so we want to graph the water line and see whether they're going to float or sink. And there's really two ways to do it. The density of water is one gram per milliliter, okay? So I could do my chart. So let's just say, uh, we'll, let's do a volume of 10 and a volume of 40. So notice I'm picking two spots a little bit separated from each other so that I can form a line. So when density is one, Volume is 10, what's my mass? That's, that's the first problem. So our mass here is 10. To find the mass of the second point, um, I do my same formula. Density is still 1, mass we're looking for, volume is 40. So my mass and my volume are the same, uh, which makes sense because my density is 1, right? Um, so uh, let's graph that. This first point, my x is 10 and my y is also 10. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, guys, but I, I don't have a space to do my next one because when mass is 40, volume's 40, and there's not a 40 on the chart. We'd have to go way over here to make the mark. So I'm just going to use 0, 0 as my first mark, okay? And then let's make our line. Whoa, water's line is way down here. See that? 
So anything above the waterline means that density is greater. Don't think above the waterline mean it's, means it's floating. We're not talking about a literal water line and objects on top of it. We're talking about a graph. So anything above the water line on the graph means density is high. What does that mean if your density is higher than water? It's going to sink. So any line above water is going to sink. Any line below water means the density is lower than water, which would mean it's going to float. Okay. So um, I think I actually told you wrong on the other picture. We usually have volume on the, on the x-axis and mass on the y. So I'm so sorry. Please switch those. I had a little brain fart. So volume is always on the bottom. Mass is always on the side. And that's it for this video. Also, I'm pregnant. Super exciting. Um, I'm due April 14th. Don't tell anyone else until they've watched the video because I want it to be a surprise. Um, if you watch the video early and you want to congratulate me, just give me a high five and I'll know what you're talking about. Okay. Have a great day.